Good morning, everybody. I'm having some technical difficulties, so just hold on just a second. So uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you guys are getting started on this warm up. Uh, my computer installed an update. And because of that, uh, I'm not going to be able to record this lesson today. So I'll try to come up with some short examples and record and post that later. Um, it is 9 o'clock, though. So I'm going to go ahead and get started um, letting people in right now. So right here we have. Uh, our warm up that hopefully you joined early and got started on. So I'm going to go ahead and go over this. Again, if you guys have questions, you can go over this. Uh, you can ask questions in the chat. Okay. And again, I'm not going to be able to uh, record and post this activity today. So I'm really sorry. My computer uh, did a, an update and the drivers for my recording software no longer work. So I'm going to have to solve that for next class. OK, so these are two things uh, that we worked on last time. This one is kind of a doozy. It has a little bit of everything. So this one's a little bit difficult. So if you struggled with this one, that's OK. We want to, this is our goal. We want to be able to do this with ease, right? So let's take a look at this. So. Uh, the first thing I noticed, right, there's a left and there's a right side. The left side looks really scary, right? So let's try to make this um, a little bit easier uh, to deal with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this uh, three times the quantity, right? I have a shopping cart and I want to multiply everything in it by three. So I'm going to distribute. So remember, this is called distribute. In. Okay, so I'm going to distribute here. So the 6t stays the same. I'm going to get 3 times 1 is 3. I'm going to get 3 times a negative 2t. So that's negative 6t. Okay, so all I did here in this first step was distribute. Okay. For my next step, uh, I'm still looking at this left side. It's still kind of crazy, right? So um, if I take a look at this, uh, I'm going to take a look at, hey, this and this look alike, don't they? They both have a T in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine like terms. Okay. And when I do that, uh, I'm going to have 6T minus 6T. That's zero. So I'm actually just going to end up with nothing. Right? So I could write zero t, but we don't need to write that. Okay, so we can just write three equals five. Um, uh, just a second. Did we talk about? Um, Oh, we haven't talked about this yet. This is what we're going to talk about today. So this is confusing, right? Like, what the heck is going on with this, right? It's 3 equals 5. So this is a new thing, and we're going to be talking about this today. If you get this, this isn't wrong. So, um, so right here, what's going on is, is this a true statement? And can you guys answer that in chat? So I just want to know, is that a true statement? Does 3 equal 5? So in chat right now, you should be type, you should be telling me, does 3 equal 5? So you can just type a yes or a no. I mean, I, I agree. I would hope so, right? Like 3 does not equal 5, right? So this is false, OK? So what we're going to look at today is what does it mean when we get something that's false, right? This can't be true. 3 does not equal 5, right? 
So uh, we're going to be looking at this today. Uh, this is a possibility of things that can happen with equations. So, uh, so that's something that I wanted to, uh, to get you guys kind of just interested in doing. We, learned, we talked about distributive property last time. We talked about combining like terms last time. But when we get down to here, this is what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. So this idea of sometimes we're going to get a false statement. And that's okay as long as we, as we know. And we're going to talk about what we're going to do with this later today. Okay. Uh, next up on uh, number two here. So again, when I look at this, I have two sides. The right side here is looking really busy, isn't it? Okay. So the right side's looking pretty busy. So I, what I'm going to do first is I see I have a number times uh, a shopping cart. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to distribute here. So what do I get? The negative 18 stays the same. Five times two is 10. Five times negative one is negative five X. And then I get plus two. Okay. So again, I'm still looking at this right side. It's still looking like it has a lot going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look to combine like terms. So I see a number by itself and a number by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine those. So 10 plus 2 is 12. And then the negative 5x is still there. And I get equal to negative 18. So what I did here, these first two steps, this was combined like terms. Right? This is what we did last class. We distributed, we combined like terms, and we got this. So now we get something that looks a little bit easier. So I want to get this x by itself. So I look at this other term. This doesn't have an x. So I want to get anything that doesn't have an x over to the other side. So this is positive 12. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides. Okay. So I have something negative. I'm going to get more negative. So I'm going to get uh, even more negative. So I'm going to have, uh, what is this, negative 30 equals negative 5x. Okay. And then in this last step, it's negative 5 times x. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 5. Okay. Um, hey, guys, I also noticed some people don't have their last names. Make sure that you go in and change your last names. All right. So uh, a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive, so I don't need to worry about that. 5 goes into 30, what do we have? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that's 6. So I'm going to get positive 6 equals x. And then this one, notice how we have a solution. OK. Now, before today, you guys were used to doing this, right? Like you get to the end, x equals this. I'm sure some of you tried this and you're like, oh, man, I must have done something wrong. Not necessarily, right? Uh, so getting a false answer sometimes can happen. And we're going to talk about this today. We're going to talk about what does it mean when we get a false answer? Does it mean I made a mistake or does it mean that it's trying to tell me something? OK, because it could be just trying to tell you that, hey, this equation is not a true statement. Like this doesn't equal negative five, okay? Which is really important in real life, okay? All righty, so um, does anybody have any questions on the warm-up, or we'll move right into the uh, lesson? All right, I don't see anyone typing into chat or saying anything in the participants. Uh, thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. All right. So let's dive into this. So again, guys, uh, my uh, computer had an update last night, and it changed all my drivers. And so I'm not able to record this. So once I have that figured out, I'll create a short little video to recap what we did in class today, OK? So make sure you're taking notes. This exact video will not be posted. Okay. So we're going to be talking about 1.3 today. And we're going to be talking about equations with variables on both sides. 
Now, in our class, the variable is usually x, right? That's what we're solving for. So the equation's with x on both sides. So that's what we're going to be working on. Hey, and I really appreciate the people who added their last names. I know that's frustrating that you're having to do that every time. I'm still working on trying to figure out how to get you guys to be able to fix that permanently. I don't know how to do that yet. Okay. So um, what are we talking about today? So what we're going to be doing is just, it's the same thing, but sometimes we have an extra step. Okay. So for example, we might have 10 minus 4x equals negative 9x. And we're going to solve this. Okay. So notice what's different here than what we've seen before. It's just a minor thing. Notice how there's an x term on the left and there's an x term on the right. Okay. So all this does, nothing changes, but it just adds one more thing we have to do. It's like, it's like, uh, your parents normally have you clean your bedroom, but now they're like, hey, I also need you to clean the living room or the, the, uh, the, the family space, okay? So to do this, what we're gonna do is we want to get our variable, right? In this case, it's X to one side and all the numbers to the other side. Okay, because remember, we want to solve for x, and that's just a fancy way of saying get x by itself, right? So to get x by itself, we want to move all of our x's to one side and all of the non-x's to the other, to the side opposite. So taking a look at this, I'm going to write this down again because I put all that stupid text in front of there. Okay. So to do this, what I'm always going to do is I'm going to look at, um, now this one is a tricky one, but I always like to move things to the side. I mean, I'm glad I'm doing this. I always like to move to the sides that has the most X. So what side has the most So this is tricky, and this is why I wanted to start with this one, because negatives are tricky. So would you rather owe $4 or would you rather owe $9? And if you think of it in terms of money, you want to owe less, right? You don't want to owe more. So it actually turns out that this one, this side, is the most X, right? Negative 4 is more than negative 9, which is kind of backwards because we think of 9 as being a bigger number. But when it's negative, right? The bigger you get negative, the, the worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my 9x over here. So I'm going to go like this, add 9x. Now you might be like, crap, why didn't you just add 4x to both sides? Well, I have a reason for that. And that's because if we do it this way, we're going to end up with a positive x value. And if we can have a positive x value, then we're going to make less mistakes with negatives. So to do this, negative 9 so and I can double check this in my calculator. Oops. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0. So this side goes to 0. I don't need to write the x here because anything times 0 is 0. And then here I have negative 4 plus 9 is positive 5. So I'm going to have 10 plus 5x. Okay, so what happens here? Well, we still want x to get by itself, right? Okay, so next I'm going to, well, I have x on this side, but I'd have this 10 on this side. So I don't want this 10 on this side. So I'm gonna subtract 10 from both sides. Okay, and I'm gonna get 5x equals negative 10. Okay. And then I'm going to divide by five. And then negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. And I really hope, guys, that you found a way to get a calculator working for you, whether that's using Desmos Scientific or an app on your phone. OK? Now, also remember, we could have at the beginning here, we 
we could have also done this. We could have added 4x to both sides. Okay, and then we would have gotten 10 equals negative 5x. So again, do you see how these look different? Okay, but then I go ahead and divide by negative 5, and then I get um, negative 2 equals x. So both ways are valid, okay? I just, I have found in my years of teaching that if we move it to the side that has the most x, that students make less errors. And um, I know it seems silly because you're just like, crap, this seems simple. But if you get into the habit of doing this, students tend to make less mistakes. And that's why I always teach it like that, okay? All right. So that's really all well that's new is that we're going to have variables on each side. Does anybody have questions um, before we move on? Okay. I see a couple of people responding. I really appreciate it, guys. When we're online, I really need that communication or I don't know what's going on. So I appreciate that. All right, so next, let's do the real deal. So this is gonna be example two, and I'm gonna call this the real deal. Okay, because if you can do this, then you know you're good. So think of this as the test, right? If you can do this problem, then you are solid with your solving. Now, with that said, do I expect everyone in here to be 100% with this? No, but you can't get 100% until you first try a couple of times and you make some mistakes and then you say, oh, I can't do that again, okay? So this one's gonna look intimidating, but we're gonna be able to do it. So I have three times the quantity of three X minus four so three times the quantity of three X minus four equals one fourth times 32 X plus 56. Okay. So this problem has a little bit of everything that we've done so far. Now today, and this is gonna be crazy guys, today this is our last bit from chapter one. So this is, this is it. I'm not gonna teach you guys any more from chapter one. So this is it. If you can do this, you get solving equations. This is, now think about this. If you were a teacher, wouldn't this be a great uh, question on a test? Wink, wink, right? Because it has everything in it. So we're gonna go ahead and try it, and then I'm gonna have you try one on your own and see how you do with it, okay? So there's a lot going on here, right? So when you look at it, it's easy to be overwhelmed and say, oh man, this is too much, I can't do it. And then you see this, you're like, a fraction? What, Kreft, you're crazy. Well, I might be crazy, but it has nothing to do with the fraction. This is where using a calculator is going to be really helpful. The calculator will take any number, multiply any number for you, okay? So there's two sides, a left side and a right side. I'm going to start with a left. So I see a number and a basket with things in it. So I'm going to multiply everything in the basket by the number, right? And remember, the fancy word for this is distribute. Okay? So I have 3 times 3x. Three so that's going to be 9x. Again, we can do this in a cap. You can go, right, in a calculator, 3 times 3. Okay? Um, I'll have it over here. And then I can do 3 times negative 4 equals negative 12. And again, I strongly, strongly encourage you guys to be using some sort of calculator, either on your phone or using that Desmos scientific calculator. If you don't have the Desmos scientific calculator up right now, um, I am going to put that in chat. So there you go. There is a link to the Desmos scientific calculator. Okay. All right. So this next part, now we're on the, uh, the right side. So to do this, I have one fourth and I'm multiplying everything in here. So I'm gonna go one fourth times 32 X and one fourth times 56. Again, the fancy word for this is distribute. Okay, 
So how do I do that? Now, on Desmos, it's the same as it is on this calculator, okay? There is a fraction button. And same as on Desmos, you're gonna get a box over a box. And so I use the arrow keys and I can go one over four, okay? And then I wanna multiply that by 32. I get eight. So this is gonna be, this right here is 8x. Okay. And then I have to do 1 fourth times 56. So I'm going to hit that fraction button again. And again, this is on Desmos Scientific Calculator as well. I can go 1 over 4 and then times 56, and I get 14. So again, with a calculator, you don't have to worry about fractions. It will do all the hard stuff for you. Okay. So we did our distribution. And now we don't have parentheses. Okay, so then we have to take a deep breath and say, okay, what's next? Well, I don't have my x's on one side. So I want to get my x's on one side. Okay, now I'm going to pick my side based on what side has the most x. So I take a look. This side has 8x. This side has 9x. Well, 9 is bigger than 8 because they're positive. So I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to subtract 8x. Okay. So 9 minus 8 is just 1x. The, the negative 12 is still here. That equals 14. Okay. And then my next step, I'm going to get all my numbers to the other side, okay? And to do that, I want x by myself, so I'm going to focus on this left side. So it says minus 12, so the opposite of that is plus 12, okay? And I get x equals, and then 14 plus 12 is 26. So I'm going to stop. This was, that was a really big deal. This was a lot, right? We distributed, we, uh, we had to move things on either side, boom, and we get that. So does anybody have questions on this specific problem? Thank you, Leslie. And hey, guys, remember, it's not just about the people who say no, it's about the people who say yes, right? So when I say, does anybody have a question? It's not a uh, it's not a democracy. It's not a popular vote. It's just does anybody want me to go back and look at anything? Thanks. Thank you for the people who are replaying, though. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Because again, if I can't see you, if I can't hear you, the only way that I can get uh, feedback is you guys typing in chat. Okay. Well, since no one said no, then I'm going to have you try one on your own. Okay. Now, again, my uh, software isn't working today, so I'm just going to have to keep track of time on my own, or you can take a look at a clock. But I want you to solve, and this is our, going to be our problem, 2 times the quantity of 3n minus 4 equals 0 0.5, okay, so that's a decimal, times the quantity of 10 minus n, boom, like that. So I want you guys to go ahead and solve that. So I'm going to go ahead and set a timer. You're not going to be able to see it because my software is not working. Um, I'm going to set a timer for a minute 30.
Keep working hard, guys. All right, so that was a minute 30. So we're gonna go over and solve this. I'm sorry if that wasn't enough time, guys. It's, it's, it's crazy times that we're, that we're doing this. So if I'm taking a look at this, I see that I have a, a lot going on on the left and a lot going on the right. So I'm gonna start on the left. So the first thing I see is it's two times some things in a shopping cart, right? In these parentheses. So I'm going to multiply everything in my cart by two. And again, the fancy word for this is distribute. Okay, so I get two times three n, that's six n. And hey, if you guys are just making a mistake with the arithmetic, make sure you're using a calculator, right? Make sure you're using that. So two times three n is six n, two times negative four is negative eight. Okay, so that's my left side. Then on my right side, I'm going to take 0 0.5 times 10 and 0 0.5 times negative 1n. So in my calculator, what's that going to look like? I can do 0 0.5, and you can do this on the Desmos calculator as well, times 10. So I'm going another way to say this, because this is a half, I'm doing a half of 10. So this is going to be 5, and then... 0.5, point, oops, 0 0.5 times negative one is negative a half. So I'm gonna have minus 0 0.5 n, okay? And some calculators might tell you this as a fraction, which is one half, and that's totally fine as well. Again, if something comes up, just, uh, just let me know in chat, okay? So again, taking a look at this, okay? So we have this. So now I notice, okay, so I got rid of the distribution, but now I have to get my ends to one side. So I'm going to get my ends to one side, okay? And I notice that 6 is bigger than negative 0.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 0 0.5 n to both sides. And I'm going to get 6.5n minus 8 equals 5. Okay. But then I notice, oh, man, I still don't have this n by itself, right? There's this minus 8 term. So I'm going to go ahead and add 8 to both sides. And I get 6.5n equals, and then 5 plus 8, I can tell you right now, my brain is thinking about the next thing we're doing. So I'm going to do that in a calculator. I get 13. Okay. Then when I get to here, I have 6.5 times n. So the opposite of multiplication is division. Oops. I don't want to divide by that n. Uh, see, I'm, I'm thinking about my next thing and I make mistakes. So I don't, I want the n there, right? So the n's going to stay. So I'm just dividing by 6.5. So on my calculator, I'm going to go 13 divided by 6.5. And I get 2. So this cancels out and I ran out of room. So I'm just going to go over here. I get n equals 2. Okay. Does anybody have questions on this question? Did anybody get lost? Anybody get confused? It's okay. Uh, I, I know people are saying no, and that's great too, because that means that you're, you're feeling good because you're, you're getting it. But if you're feeling confused or lost, I want to be able to help you out because it's very normal to get these wrong, guys. It's very normal. I don't expect people, I don't, I would be shocked if everyone could do this right um, because that's not the point. The point is that we're trying, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to ask questions, we're going to figure out why we, we made those mistakes. So uh, again, this is my, my check-in. Is everybody doing okay? 
Okay, so uh, Leslie, what's really important, and, and I'm glad that you shared that because other people are gonna really benefit from this, is you have, to, you have to figure out where you're getting confused. So it could be you look at this and you're like, crap, I don't know how to start. Now, of course, when I go over it, it makes a lot of sense. But what you need to keep track of is if you look at this and you don't know to distribute, then you should make a note of that. Be like, I get stuck when I need to distribute because that's what you're going to work on. Because when next time you see it, you're going to be like, I get stuck here. And what do I, what did I do to get unstuck last time? Does that kind of make sense guys? Because, and, and Leslie, I'm so glad you said that. And this is why I need you guys to communicate. It could be that you're like, Kreft, I'm good with distributing, but when I get to here, I get confused what to do. Right. But then you need to look at your notes and be like, ah, I'm getting stuck when I need to get all of my terms to one side. Okay. So, um, I really appreciate that comment, Leslie, and you're a rock star because you're helping out everyone in class. When you guys are, when you, when you're trying a problem on your own and you get stuck, try to figure out why you're getting stuck, where you're getting stuck. And then that way, um, that's how you're going to get better and be like, this is what's, this is what's getting me. Cause it's usually never the whole problem. It's usually one or two things that are stopping you from getting the whole problem. Okay. So, uh, did that help out guys that, um, Leslie, is there anything I can go back and, and Alex, Alexis and, and Robert, you guys said, yeah, too. Is there anything you, that specifically that you want me to go back over? Okay. Well, um, and stuck on the third part. Okay. So if this was the first part and this was the second part, is this the third part that you're talking about? This one right here? Okay. So in this case, when we get to, so when we get to here, this right here is what we started off the school year going. So we want, so the whole point here is we want to get N by itself. Oh my gosh. Come on, crap. So I can, I can, I can spell it. So, all right. Um, so right here, uh, the first thing, so this is, yeah, it is tricky sometimes. Totally. Uh, the, the trick here is right. Remember when we're doing this, we want to do PEMDAS and we're doing PEMDAS backwards. Okay. So when you want to solve, sorry, this is an L and a V my writing today is, is suspect. So we want to start with addition and subtraction. And that's why I got rid of this negative eight first. So when you get to this point, you just want to get of all addition and subtraction first and then deal with multiplication and division last. Okay. So again, do addition, subtraction first and do multiplication and division second. Okay. And uh, the good news is we're going to have a, uh, two more additional days to practice chapter one stuff before we move on. So we're just going to keep coming back to this and keep practicing. Okay. So if you feel a, a little uneasy now, we're going to get more and more practice with it. Okay. So I'm going to move on because we're going to have more of this practice coming up. Okay. And we're just going to get better and better. And I really appreciate how you identified where you're getting stuck because the next time you get stuck here, you're going to be like, Oh man, have said something about this and then you might not get it but then the next time you're going to be like okay i know how to do this right so remember this is a process and it's frustrating sometimes because we don't get it right away but it's okay it's very that's part of the process and thank you i appreciate it all right so at the very beginning we talked about solutions so that's what we're going to finish up today with is identifying So identifying the number of solutions. Okay, so identifying the number of solutions. So uh, in the future, so in second trimester, we're gonna have more options, but right now we're gonna have three options. You're either going to have one solution 
So an example of this would be like x equals 5. Okay, so that's one solution. That's what we're used to. That's what you're comfortable with. We're going to have no solution. Okay, so no solution is when you get a false statement. Okay, so false means not true, right? So what was our example that we had in our warm-up? I have it right over here. We got 3 equals 5, okay? So, and we said this is false, okay? So we would say no solution, okay? So if you solve something and you get a false statement, we say that is no solution. It can't happen. There's no answer. Okay. And then the last one is infinitely many solutions. Oops. Sorry. I have my lesson plan here. So we have infinitely, infinitely, um, infinitely many solutions. Sorry. My spacing is really terrible, isn't it? So infinitely many solutions. Can you guys go ahead and in chat tell me, uh, does anybody know what infinite means? What's infinity? Have you guys ever heard of that word before? Yeah, forever. And it's kind of silly that we write infinitely many solutions because it's right. It's like many solutions, right? It never stops. It's not a number. It's an idea. It's like if you try to think of your of the biggest number that you can ever think of and then add one to it. Right. So infinitely many solutions just means all solutions work. OK, so what that means is if you get it's when you get a true statement. OK, do you guys see how this one's false? This is when you have a true statement. So an example would be 5 equals 5. So you're like, look at that. Well, like, well, yeah, 5 is 5. So this is true. So then we would say we have infinitely many solutions. Okay. So these are the three. And then we're going to spend the rest of class looking at examples of these three. Okay. Now, just to, again, in the future, there's going to be, there's going to be an in-between. We're going to be able to have two solutions, three solutions. But for right now, these are our three. These are the only three you need to worry about. One solution, that's what we're used to. That's what we've been doing this whole chapter. You get x equals something, t equals something, right? t equals negative four thirds. That's one solution, okay? But what we're going to focus on is no solution and infinitely many solutions. So I'm going to do a couple of examples here to uh, help you guys out with uh, doing this, okay? So the first one is I'm going to have three times the quantity of 5x plus 2 equals 15x. Okay. So uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to do this one so that um, we can see what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute. Okay. So I get 3 times 5x. That's 15x. And you know to distribute, right, when you have a number outside of parentheses. So if you're getting, if you're like stuck, like, hey, I don't know how to solve these, you see parentheses, you see a number on the outside, you multiply. So we have 3 times 5x, 3 times 2 is 6. Now, the more we do these, notice how there's a 15x here and a 15x here. Uh-oh, right? Something's going to be crazy. Because what side has more, right? What side has more x? They have the same amount of x. X. So it doesn't matter what side we move it to. If I subtract 15x, 
right, to both sides. I get 6 equals 0. So in the chat, can you guys tell me if this is true or false? So is this true or is it false? So does 6 equals 0? So I noticed some people wrote true and some people wrote false. You guys have to think, does six equal nothing? If you have six dollars, do you have nothing? If I have six friends, do I have zero friends? So this is false, right? Six and zero are not the same, right? These are not the same, okay? So this is false. So again, six does not equal zero. So if I go up here, what happens when I have a false statement? I write no solution. Okay, and that's what I box. That's my answer, no solution. Okay, I don't have X equals, I don't have, right? It's not an X equals, it's a false statement. Six cannot equal zero, okay? So no solution. And that's perfectly OK, right? It's perfectly OK to have no solution. So let's take a look at the next one. And then we're going to have time for you guys to try out a quick one on your own, OK? So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to solve negative 2 times the quantity of 4y plus 1. And that's going to equal negative 8y minus 2. So again, I hope you guys are getting into the, or you guys are starting to see this, right? I have a number times some parentheses, right? Times a shopping cart. So whenever I have that, you guys need to, in your head, you need to think, oh man, I'm gonna have to do that, that one thing he keeps doing, right? The distributive property or distribute, distribute, okay? So negative two times four Y is negative eight Y and negative two times positive one is negative two. Whoa, do you guys see this? So on this one, I don't even need to keep going. Is this side the exact same on this side? Can you tell me, so take a look guys, this side is the same as this side. Now, I'm gonna keep going to solve this, but when you guys get better at this, you could stop right here and you could be like, is this a true or a false statement? But I'm going to go ahead and go one further. So I'm going to get all my y's to one side. And when I do that, I get negative 2 equals negative 2. So in the chat, can you guys tell me, is this a true statement or is this a false statement? So does negative 2 always equal negative 2? Is that true or is it false? And you guys should be typing that into chat. Thanks, guys. All right, so it seems like we're, we're a little bit more on the same page on this one now. Maybe I, I tricked you a little bit on that first one, but the second one, we're, we're very, this is true, right? Okay, so this is a true statement. So what do I write for true? I write infinitely many solutions. So I'm gonna write infinitely many solutions. So the only reason this one sucks a little bit is we have to write a little bit more, right? So infinitely many solutions. Okay, so these are our two examples. Okay. Now remember, if we just have our normal one, you know, like we just get a normal equation, that's just one solution, we're good to go, right? So these two are very special. Right? They're special because we don't get an answer for X. So these two are very special solutions that happen. Uh, can you put an infinite? Um, so instead of saying uh, infinitely many solutions, so I would just say if you're going to write infinite solution, I would write infinitely, um, I would write infinite solutions. So I would write this. Infinite solutions. Like that. 
Uh, the reason why I wrote it like this is that your assignment is going to be from the book and the resources are going to be from the book and the book uses this. That's why I'm doing this. Uh, you might also see other books or other websites. If you go in and do a Google search, it might say all real solutions. Okay, but I'm just going by what our book uses because that's what our assignment is out of and that's what our resources are. Out of. Okay. All right. So we do have a little bit of time left. So with that time, um, I would like you to try one out. Okay, so I want you to solve and state how many solutions it has. Okay, so you're going to solve and state how many solutions it has. So here's your problem. Four times the uh, quantity of 3D minus 1 equals 12D. Okay. And I'm going to give you guys uh, a minute to do this because we're going to try to get two of them. All right, so that was a minute, and I know that was a really quick amount of time, but we're going to try to squeeze two in here. So to solve this, I first notice I have a number times a parenthesis. So I'm just looking out for this, right? I'm going to distribute. Four times three is 12, so I have 12D. Four times negative one is negative four. Okay. Uh, look how I have D's on either side, so I want to get them to one side. Uh, which side has more? Well, they're both the same, aren't they? Are you guys seeing a pattern with these special cases, right? We're seeing a lot of this. So it doesn't matter what side I move it to because I'm doing the same thing to both sides, right? You guys see I'm doing the same thing? So that goes away, that goes away. The difference is I get negative 4 equals 0. So is this a true solution? Is this true or is this false? You guys can type that really quick. Okay, all right, all right. So it seems like people are on the same page again. This is false. So my answer isn't negative four equals zero. My answer is no solution. Okay. Now, I only have uh, a couple of minutes left, and so I really think you guys would benefit some, from some practice, so I'm going to write down one more. Sorry, I didn't then I wipe this one here. So this is 21 minus 7w equals 7 times the quantity of 3 minus w. So take a minute and do this really quickly and then we'll be able to go over it and be done for the day. 